In this three-part demo, we'll write a MATLAB code to create a change maker. Let's say I give you 82 cents. What is the least number of pennies, nickels, dimes, and quarters you need to make 82 cents? You could use 82 pennies, but that's clearly not the minimum. You can also use 8 dimes and 2 pennies, so 10 total coins. But there's an even better solution. Logic, intuition, and probably real life can tell us that the best solution uses 3 quarters, 1 nickel, and 2 pennies for a total of 6 coins. This happens to be the most efficient way to make 82 cents. This problem is known as the change-making problem. Given an amount of change, return the minimum number of pennies, nickels, dimes, and quarters needed to make the change. It seems simple, but there's actually a lot of math behind it if you dive really deep. This particular problem utilizes what's called the greedy algorithm, which happens to be a type of optimization technique. I'll provide some links in the description to some informative sites which are definitely worth a skim. Our goal is to write a MATLAB function which solves the change-making problem. I'll note that we are making two major assumptions. First, we'll constrain money to range from 1 to 99 cents for simplicity. We'll also only use pennies, nickels, dimes, and quarters. Half dollar and dollar coins do exist in the US, but we'll exclude them because they're not that common. You should always have a strategy before opening MATLAB. As tempting as it is to dive right into the coding, it's foolish to do so without developing some semblance of a flowchart. Grab some paper. Think about how you would solve this problem in real life, then think about how you can translate that algorithm into MATLAB code. Write down whatever you're thinking. Eventually, you want your logic to be fleshed out enough to form a crude flowchart or write some pseudocode. At this stage, your logic doesn't have to be perfect, but you need to have something written down before you start coding. Pause the video here and start developing your logic. Okay, I hope you've written something down. Here's my flowchart. It's not perfect, but it's enough to convey the gist of the algorithm. First, we input money to the function. Then, we construct a while loop and check if money is greater than zero in every iteration. I chose to use a while loop instead of a for loop because we don't know how many iterations it'll take. When you use a for loop, you generally know how long a process will take. But we don't necessarily know, nor can we predict, how long it'll take, so a while loop better fits our needs. Inside the while loop, we check if we currently have at least 25 cents, since the quarter has the highest value of the four coins. If so, we increment the number of quarters we used and subtract 25 from the current amount of money. We keep iterating until the current value of money dips below 25 cents, then we start using dimes, the next highest valued coin. We repeat the process using dimes, then nickels, then finally pennies. We want to progress from quarters to pennies to ensure we minimize our coin usage. Here's a tabular representation of the flowchart with some concrete numbers. Let's say we start with 82 cents. If we subtract a quarter, we have 57 cents left over. We iterate numq and move on to the second iteration. We currently have 57 cents, so we subtract 25 more cents and are left with 32 cents. We bump up numq again and start the third iteration. This process repeats itself one more time until we get to the fourth iteration, at which point we start using nickels because we have less than 25 cents. Because we have 7 cents at the start of this iteration, we also can't use dimes. We therefore use a nickel and then two pennies in the last two iterations. At the end, we use three quarters, no dimes, one nickel, and two pennies, which agrees with what I said at the beginning of the video. Making a flowchart can be hard because it needs to be as general as possible. There is only one number in this entire flowchart. Everything else is symbolic. This can be confusing for a beginner, but testing your flowchart with some numbers like I did here can help. You can also do the opposite. You could develop your flowchart from one specific test case, then try to generalize it as much as possible so it works for any test case. No matter what you do, this should all be done before opening MATLAB. Now that we have our algorithm mostly developed on paper, we can begin coding. In the next video, we'll convert this flowchart into MATLAB code.